So after looking at uh, uh, the block diagrams, uh, representation, and also looking at the ratios that uh, we are supposed to obtain in order to analyze a system, we are going to look at uh, rules that are used in block diagrams reduction. So we usually uh, have to reduce the block diagrams, as we had said, uh, to canonical uh, form, and that is a block diagram that has got only one forward element and one feedback element in order to obtain its overall transfer function. That is the closed loop transfer function, which is usually very, very important. So when you talk about the block, block uh, the, the rules used in block diagram uh, reduction, there are several rules, but uh, we are majorly going to look at uh, uh, six, six, uh, about six uh, uh, rules uh, that we are going to look at. No, 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 not really six, but seven rules that we are going to look at as far as uh, the block diagram uh, uh, reduction method is concerned. So the first rule that we are going to look at is how to combine the games that are in series. So you are supposed to look at how to combine the games that are in series. So the first rule is that uh, we, we, for us to obtain the block diagram, we usually, ha when several blocks are connected in series, then those blocks will be equal uh, to the product of the individual blocks. So this one can be shown as, so for example, if we have several blocks in series, maybe we have a block G1, then another block in series with it, we have G2, then another block in series with it, we have G3, and of course that one is now our R of S, that is the input, and then this is now our C of S, that is now the output. So if you have that, then this one can be equivalent to getting just the product of these blocks. We, I can reduce that, we, we can reduce that under the first rule by getting R of S, then having a simple single block where we have the product of the three blocks, that is G1, G2, G3, and then we have the output C of S. So that is the first way uh, by which uh, we can reduce the block uh, uh, diagram uh, if, we, if we are given the blocks that are connected in series. So we can go to the second rule. You can have blocks that, uh, uh, you can have how to reduce or, or how to, to remove a loop how to remove a closed, uh, uh, a closed loop in a, in a system. If we have maybe minor loops in a given block diagram, then we can always do that. So the second rule, we are going to do this by, assume you have a block like that, and here you have G of H, G, G, G of S, then here we have a feedback, we can talk of that one as H, then this one is just a loop, so this one is R of S. Of course, that is the error, E of S. And of course, we have a R of S. No, not R of S, but C of S as the output. Then that is now what you have. So if you want to get uh, this particular, uh, if you want to reduce this particular block, then this one will be equivalent to getting the overall transfer function of this by just expressing it in terms of C of S over R of S. So we get C of R ratio, which is the control ratio or the closed loop transfer function in order to transform it from closed loop to open loop. And that one will be by, we have, uh, of course, we have our R of S. Then our R of S goes to that. Then we get, we get uh, the, for, for, for us to transform it, we have G all over one, that one, G, H, and then there we have what we call C of S. So that is how we can transform that one, that is the second rule that we are going to use in order to reduce the block diagram method. Another rule uh, that uh, we can always use is uh, uh, looking at uh, the order of the summing points. The order of summing point do usually do not uh, affect the result. So if you change the summing point, maybe we have a situation whereby, so the, sec the third rule, we have a situation whereby we can talk of a point X1 here and the point X1 goes to another point here. Then here we have X2. Then after X2, we have that point there. Then we have another uh, junction, whereby we are going to get X3. Maybe it is a negative X3. Then here we have X4. So we can combine all this, because if we look at this, then at this point we have X1, 
plus x2. So it is, if you look at the whole of that, then it can be written as x1 plus x2 minus x3 is giving us x4. So we can do the same, whereby we can only have a simple, uh, uh, just one junction, and then here we can have that. Then we can simply say that here we have x1, then we have x2, then here we have x4, then here we have minus x3, of which now if you look at x4, if you look at x4, then it's going to still going to be, so here we have x4. So if you look at x4, so x4 is still going to be x1 plus x2 minus x3, which is just the same as what was there previously. So that is the third rule. We can look at the fourth rule. So when you look at the fourth rule, all the rule number four. So for the rule number four, we can talk of a, a summing point. We shift the summing point. The summing point can be shifted beyond a gain block. So when you have to shift the summing point beyond a gain, beyond a gain block, then uh, we can have uh, uh, like, like a case, a scenario whereby we have a block, the, the blocks like that. We have x1 here. Then we have that. Then here we can have x2. Then here we can have a block G. We can have a block G. And then we have x3. So we want to shift this particular summing point to go beyond this particular block. So if we have to shift it that way, then what we will notice is that at this point, at this point we have x1 uh, plus x2. Then we multiply by g. Yeah? So it means that our x3 in this case is going to be g into x1 plus x2. So we want to shift this summing point beyond this gain, but the equation should remain the same. So in that case, what we can do is just to have our x1 here. Then our x1 here can be multiplied by g independently so that g independently. So then again, we have our, so we, this one we can talk of it as maybe minus x2. If it is minus, then it is, it is going to change. So we can give it a minus. Then we can also have minus x2. Then minus x2 again goes through another g, again independently. Then from there they combine to have what we call, uh, we can combine them so that we move the summing point. Uh, beyond that block, so we can combine them there, so that here we have x3, of which if you look at it, then this is going to be g x1 minus g x2, which is going to give us x3, of, the, of which if we factor out g, we have g into x1 plus x2, which is equals to x3. So if you look at that, uh, then of course that is minus. If you look at that, then you will find that everything that one is equal to that. So you can see that we are not changing, but we are simply changing, we, we are not changing uh, whatever uh, the signal that is at the output, but rather we are change, simply changing the arrangement. So that is one way by which uh, we can deal, we can move a summing point. Another uh, rule that we can also use is how to move what we call, or, or how to shift a pick of point or a take of point. So we can talk of the rule number five. In rule number five, we can always uh, have, we can have a system like that, whereby we can talk of a, uh, not really, here we can talk of a block. So here we are talking about uh, uh, you shifting, you are shifting uh, a takeoff point. So if you shift a takeoff point, then you can talk of that one, you can talk of x1 here, then from that, you can talk of x2, then here, we have uh, maybe a gain, G. Then that particular gain, G, is what we want to shift. So here we can have uh, what we call, here we can have X3. So if you have that, then it means that at this point, we have X1 uh, plus X2. We have X1 and then minus X2, then there is a G. Then this one, of course, this one is also equivalent. This one will be equivalent to simply we want to move this particular point beyond this. And because this x2 was not, initially it was not part of the gain, 
we can move it beyond that and divide by uh, g so that we can have something like uh, x1. We have our x1 there. Then x1 goes, we can have our x1 here. Then x1 will go to g. Then there. x1 will go to g. Then there. Then we can have our x2 here. Then x2, because it was not part of that, then we have 1 over g. Then we have that way. So in that case, we have x2 divided by g, the gain because the gain was coming uh, after that was, was beyond that signal. So we have to divide in order to do that. When you are moving it, in, uh, in uh, summary, when you are moving, uh, the, you, you are shifting beyond a gain point, then you divide. When you are shifting uh, be in, in forward before a gain point, then you will have to multiply. So that is uh, what uh, we can talk about. So that is how we can use the rule of uh, pick of point. We can talk about uh, eliminating a parallel path. We can talk about eliminating uh, and, uh, the, the next rule, that is uh, rule number six, whereby we are going to eliminate a forward path that is in parallel with another block. So if you have two parallel paths uh, that can be replaced, this one can simply be replaced by a single block whose gain will be equal to the sum of the gains of uh, the two paths. So in that case, we can have uh, something like that. Uh, so we have, uh, and you, you must be very careful because uh, what differentiates a loop and a forward and, 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 uh, and parallel path is simply the direction of the arrows. So you should take note of the direction of the arrow. So if you have, uh, that is now rule number six. So we can talk of rule number six. So in that case, we can talk of having G1. Let's say we have G1 here. Then again, uh, here, this is the point. Then here we have G2. Then there, we have them uh, joining each other at that point before they give an output. So what you can see is the direction. So at that point, we can have C. And of course, we can talk of that one to be minus or plus. So this one, we can simply make it uh, such that, uh, uh, we can simply make this one such that you have G1 plus or minus G2. Then uh, we can serve it, whereby we have uh, the output. Of course, this one we can talk of R of S, then C of S. So we can now call R of S then this one is simply going to be one big one block that combines the sum of the two, that is G1 plus or minus G2, and then you go to that, and that one will give you C of S. And that is how you will be able to obtain uh, that particular. So that one was number six. Now we can go to the, the, the number seven, and then we can, I, I said that we are going to talk about seven rules only, and that is what we are going to use in order to solve, uh, uh, to reduce block diagrams to canonical call form. So we are going to go to the seventh, seventh uh, uh, rule. And in the seventh rule, we, this is just the interchange. It is just referring to the interchange of takeoff points. Huh? Uh, that is, and, and when you talk of the takeoff points, this is where the output is tapped for use elsewhere. And this, this is the way it can be changed. So if you have a system that looks like this, so you can talk of G1, then you can also talk of G2 here. Then you have signal coming from there to this side. Then maybe another one coming from there to that side. Of course, you can talk of that. This one may be R of S, this one may be C of S. So this signal, if you look at, there is nothing in between here. So this ones can simply be represented by simply having uh, you are G1 here, then G2 here. Because there is no change, there is no either summing point or pick of point in between them, you can simply have them as that. And that is the rule that, the rules that are always used uh, in order to solve the block diagrams. So if you look at these rules, uh, the rules that we have given out are not very exhaustive and but you'll realize that they can help you to reduce most of the block diagrams to a manageable level. So in that case, 
uh, we don't say that there is uh, fast or hard rules uh, that have been laid down for the simplification. Uh, when you come to complicated block diagrams, then uh, this one can be ruled, this, this one can always be reduced by uh, using uh, simple steps, like you can combine all the, look at that particular block diagram, then combine all the blocks that are in series. But for the blocks to be in series, ensure that there is no either summing point or peak of point between them. If there is a peak of point or summing point between the blocks, then they cannot be considered to be in series. Then after that, you can also look at the blocks that are in parallel. You should don't ensure that you don't confuse the blocks that are in parallel with the loops. The loops usually have one of them pointing the, 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 the backward direction, feedback, whereas the, the, the forward, uh, the, the blocks usually have the, 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 the parallel ones have them pointing, combining at one point. Then you will also find that uh, you can also, in between, you can also uh, uh, eliminate all the minor feedback loops. Maybe there are several feedback loops within that particular block diagram. You can always eliminate them and move. And, and you should start from inside moving outwards. Then you can also uh, shift the summing points where it is uh, summing points or uh, pick off points where it is necessary. And these particular steps should be carried out repetitively until a canonical uh, or block diagram is achieved. So those ones are the rules that uh, we can use in order to uh, reduce the block diagram to canonical form. So the I think we are going to stop there. For more materials concerning the diagrams, uh, that uh, the, the, the materials that we have talked about as far as the block diagrams are concerned, you can make a reference to www.tripleeeds.education. You can find uh, the materials in that particular site. Uh, just look for the block diagram, uh, for the topic block diagrams, and you will be able to find those materials that uh, can help you in order to carry out that, uh, the block, block diagrams plus the reduction methods plus the canonical uh, simplification and so on. So you can always make a reference to that particular website, www.tripleeeds.education, in order to find uh, those learning materials.